Here is part two of section 3.5, which are properties of transformations. Last video dealt with properties of translations. This one is going to deal with the properties of reflections. And so, of course, a reflection is a flip, okay? Um, if you look at the image here, some of this notation uh, we're going to talk about as it pertains to these sections that you need to fill out for your notes. All right, so a property is, again, a characteristic of, um, of something. And in this case, it is the characteristics of the pre-image to the image and what remains the same or what, uh, what are the effects of, you know, um, some of the um, parts of a pre-image to an image. So one property, the first one is side length and angle measure are preserved. So again, this just means that they remain the same. So you keep them, keep the same. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that corresponding segments on the pre-image and the image are congruent. So for example, angle C in the pre-image is congruent as is indicated by the two arc marks. Angle C is congruent to angle C prime. B is congruent to B prime. A is congruent to A prime. So if the measure of angle B was 75 degrees, so would the measure of angle B prime. Okay, and then the same thing with the side. So if we look at side BC, that is congruent to side B prime, B prime. I'm sorry, B prime, C prime. So if BC is 10 units or 10, you know, the length is 10, then that's the case for B prime, C prime as well. And then the same for AC and A prime, C prime. So in this case, corresponding segments and angles on the pre-image and the image are congruent. Okay, so you will be asked that question, what is the relationship between side AC and side A prime, C prime? Um, they're congruent. So uh, whatever the length is here, the length is here. Okay, on to, and then the same thing with the angles, like we just stated. Also, points move different distances. What does that mean? That's a property. It's, it means that distance travel depends on the distance from the line of reflection. So what that means is the distance from A to A prime, B to B prime, and C to C prime are not going to be congruent. They're not going to be the same distances because in a reflection, we're counting the number of units away from the line of reflection. And in that case, it may be a different, a different number of units for each point. And so the distances from A to A prime, B to B prime, C to C prime are not necessarily going to be the same. Okay. Um, and we see that here, A, A prime is not equal to B, B prime, which is not equal to C, C prime. All righty. Special points. This one is important, very important, in fact. Um, and it says that points that lie on the line of reflection do not move. They are invariant. So what that means is, I'll draw a little teeny-weeny example here. Okay, so say um, your line of reflection is the x-axis, I'm sorry, the y-axis, okay, and we have points A, B, C, and D. Right? If you notice points B and C, or C and B, are on the y-axis. Okay? If the line of the reflection is the y-axis, when I reflect this figure, I would only be literally counting the number of units away D is, and then plot that wherever it goes. The number of units away from the line of reflection A is, and plot that where it goes. Okay? So then D prime would end up somewhere here. A prime would end up somewhere here, but the, um, the points that are on the line of reflection stay there. They don't move, all right? That's what invariant means. So if it's on the line of reflection, the points don't move, okay? 
What about orientation? That's another one that's important, all right? Orientation is the order of the points, or the relative order. So if I look at this image again, right? If I were to read these points clockwise, right? I want to read them clockwise. And if I did that, it would read A, B, C, points A, B, C, because I'm reading them clockwise. Now, when I do the same with the reflection, read it clockwise, it's A prime, C prime, B prime. So the points are not in the same order, right? Because again, if I read this clockwise, it's A, B, C. If I read that clockwise, it's A prime, C prime, B prime. If I read this counterclockwise, it's A, C, B. If I read this counterclockwise, it's A prime, B prime, C prime. So the relative order of the points, this is a very important property. For some reason, they love to test your understanding of this property. Um, and so the orientation or the order of points is not preserved. And this is true only of a reflection. That's what makes a reflection unique, is that when you reflect a figure, you change the order of the points or the coordinates, or rather the points, let's call it the points, okay? So, um, so in, again, in the pre-image, the order of the points is A, B, C versus the image in which it's A prime, C prime, B prime. All right, please remember that one. Line of reflection. The line of reflection is, this is important as well, especially uh, when we get to the uh, try it out. The line of reflection is the perpendicular bisector, okay? So we've talked about perpendicular lines, but we really haven't gone into detail on what a perpendicular bisector is. But if you know from the word bisect that it means to split into two equal parts, and you know that perpendicular means that it inter a line that intersects another line at a 90 degree angle, you can figure that out yourself, okay? So the perpendicular bisector of segments connecting corresponding points. In this case, line M, let's go back up to this image, line M is the perpendicular bisector of A, A prime, B, B prime, and C, C prime. So this line of reflection is a perpendicular bisector, meaning it intersects the lines that connect the points that are reflected, it connects them, and it inter I'm sorry, it, um, it intersects those connecting lines at a 90 degree angle, okay? And it also, that's the thing about a perpendicular bisector, splits that segment into two congruent parts. So now let's talk about the try it out. So the try it out, um, which I did here, the try it out says point A is 3, negative 2, and it's reflected so that it's image, right? So this point was reflected so that its image is 5, 2. What is the equation of the line of reflection? So this is the image, that's the image, that's the pre-image. This segment that connects them, right? We're trying to figure out what line would perpendicularly bisect it, okay? First things first, we would need to know what would be the midpoint of these, because again, a bisector splits a segment into two congruent parts, okay? So, we are going to use the midpoint formula, as I did here. So, I used the midpoint formula, and I found, right, 3 plus 5 divided by 2 is 4, and 2 my plus negative 2 divided by 2, which is 0. So the midpoint, that's the first thing I did was I found the midpoint of the segment. Whoops, sorry to make that sloppy. That's our midpoint. I also defined what a perpen bi perpendicular bisector is. And then I found the midpoint, okay? And so let's graph the midpoint, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 0. Okay, so that would be right here. All right, so that's the midpoint, which means that this is congruent to that. But we're not finished, all right? We also need to find the slope of this segment. Why? Because the slope will tell us what the, um, what the uh, slope of the 
perpendicular line that bisects it would be. And so we know that we would need to have a inverse reciprocal slope, okay? So I use the slope formula, y sub 2 minus y sub 1. I did y sub 1 minus y sub 2, same difference. You'll get the same result. So negative 2 or 2 minus negative 2 is 4. Ooh, I didn't keep the order the same. 2 minus negative 2. I should, oh no, I did. 2 minus negative 2 is 4. 5 minus 3 is 2. And so the, the slope of this line is 2. So the inverse reciprocal would be negative 1 half. And that's what I wrote here. And so knowing what my slope is, I use one of the points to plug into y equals mx plus v. Oh, actually, no. Knowing what my midpoint was, I plug because I know that this line is going to go through the midpoint. So knowing that my midpoint is 4, 1, I used, or 4, 0, I used y's. I plugged in 0 for y. I plugged in x for 4. And so I did 0 is equal to 4 times negative 1 half. I got negative 2. And so I had to add 2 to both sides. So my y-intercept is that so is this this is my y-intercept so the equation of the line is y equals negative a half x plus two that would be the equation of the line of reflection and then let me go ahead and graph that so that is the y-intercept and if it's negative i would need to go down two or down one Right two, so down one, one, two. And that would be the line. Okay. Um, again, just to recap, first things first, clarified what perpendicular bisector was. I know a bisector splits a segment into two congruent parts. Next, found the midpoint of the segment connected by the point, image and pre-image points. Then, using the midpoint formula, found that midpoint, which is 4, 0. Using the then I found the slope of this line, this segment here. Once I found the slope, I plugged in into the y equals mx plus b formula to figure out the actual equation of the line, or really the y-intercept. Plugged in my y is 0, my x is 4, and my slope negative 1 half, because again, Slope of a perpendicular line is the inverse reciprocal. Okay, and then once I did that, I got my y-intercept, which was 2, put it all together, and then graphed the line. Stay tuned for the next video.